الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our master and our creator. And Allah ta'ala sends down humanity for a little time in this dunya, which has been termed in the Quran as a test that Allah wants to check. That who amongst us can excel in their amal. If you look at life, right from conception, you will see that the ni'mah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they gradually increase on the wujud or the existence of a person. While we are in the wombs of our mother, there are countless things that can go wrong. Countless things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the embryo, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it warmth, gives it nourishment, it makes it survive. And over the period, the nine month period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to give the blessings of the ability to hear, the ability to see, the ability to smell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everyone, you know, their limbs and their hands, etc. All of that development, slowly and steadily, if you look at that, various ni'mah, various blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, are formed or are given to a person. Now, when the person comes in the world, the modality of ni'mah, the modality of blessings, they change. The blessings don't end. For example, before, the nourishment was provided to us through the blood of our mother. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up new ways of nourishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us warmth in a new way. He continues to be our Rabb. And so you see throughout the life, life itself is a ni'mah, right? How many times there's a miscarriage and this life is unable to experience this time in this dunya, right? How many times uh, people, they develop certain disabilities in the wombs and you know, once you develop them, if you're born a person who is blind, you know, you can never be unblind in this dunya. You can never see in this dunya. If you are born from the womb without a limb, you cannot grow a limb when you come in this dunya. And so we call that a test. Right? We call that a test. A person who was born with disabilities, um, any kind of disabilities, physical or whether they are mental, etc., those are certain ni'mas that were not given as a test to that person. But throughout the life, if you look, things are given. Things are given um, as time passes, right? People, you know, their ability to, to speak, you cannot speak right from the get-go. Even the science, you know, if you look at the linguistics, the science behind that is, is very interesting. Because they have not been able to figure out just yet. I, I know Noam Chomsky did a lot of work at MIT of how people are able to acquire language. Because we are only exposed to certain rules of grammar, certain verbiage, vocabulary. We don't have, you know, um, we don't have access to all of grammar and all of verb. But we are, we're able to pick everything up, and we are able to kind of grow on that. And so some people, let's say, if the ni'mat of unable to hear, then that's, that becomes difficult. But so people acquire language, people are able to speak, people are able to communicate, express their emotions, and you know, so on and so forth, it grows. You know, people acquire knowledge, this acquisition of the knowledge as well is kind of connected with the acquisition of communication and language, right? And then they use that to, for example, earn their living, because right? you have to survive, you know, people get jobs and businesses, etc. 
this rizq is also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? People, they look for companionship, they eventually get married, and you know, once they're married, looking for their own houses, their own homes, having their own children, each and every aspect. I mean, if you look, just look, look a holistic view, a bird's eye view, you see how ni'mas are given, or the modalities of ni'mah, they change throughout life, and when we you approach my age, for example, slowly and steadily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gradually takes each ni'mah away. Before, when you were young, you know, around your 20s, people are full of energy, full of vigor. You know, you can conquer the world. You can do anything and everything, right? That is, again, that this is a blessing, right? But, you know, you come around this age, and now it becomes difficult. So that energy is taken away. That health is taken away. You know, the, the mechanics, the... The body that Allah Ta'ala gave and with all of, of its wonders, you know, subhanAllah, you know, to, to me, medicine should really be part of Dars and Azami. Because it, you know, so, you know, the more you get into it, the more you read about it, all you do is like, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, ya Allah, how did you create this and how did you create that? And it's amazing, right? It's amazing, right? And so towards the end, you know, all gradually, you know, our cognition, sometimes our memories, our physical strength, our physical energies, um, you know, sometimes our loved ones, our parents who were like a shade for us, slowly and steadily, each and every one of her, you know, picked away. It is a sign, the sign of our eventuality, that the test is about to be over, that what you were here for is about to be over, and a new modality of life, a new mode of life is going to be given to you. And so, what is death? Death is ultimately the taking away of all the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in this dunya. That's what death is. Right? Everything that Allah ta'ala gave, you know, that life, that time, that opportunity, you know, as far as jism and jasad is concerned, as our physical and even our metaphysical existence is concerned, the ruh is concerned, all of the, those ni'mahs are just pulled away. Right? Everything is given and then everything is pulled away. This is what we call death, mot. Kullu nafsin za'ikatul mot. Everything, every person, every nafs have to taste it. Right? So, just looking at it from the perspective of, of Nema, why am I saying that? Because a lot of times, during this test, during this time that Allah Ta'ala has given us, our perception of the Nema changes. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that rather than seeing it through the eyes of a gift from Allah Ta'ala, we make the mistake of attributing it to ourselves. We make the mistake of attributing it to ourselves. So, it is I who is a great orator. It is I who have gained the ill. It is I who has done the zikr. Right, it is me. So, right, it is uh, I'm saying I in the sense of Anna, right? I, I, I. It is, you know, me, meaning I who gets the risk. It is I who is putting in the effort. Right? So, I starts to replace in our perception where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be. Because in Hakika, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Right? The give and take, the change of modality is happening. But from our vantage point, our perception, it's not there. It is I who has the strength. It is I who made the mihnat. It is I who has the house. I own the house. I own this car. It is my family. Right? I, 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 I. And what that, you know, naturally, obviously, you know, if that is the perception, you, you can imagine what the result of that is. That slowly and steadily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to fade away from our mind. Not in hakika, but from our mind and gets replaced with our own nafs. And this leads to like a very major kind of defect um, in our existence, which we will call like, you know, a sense of takabur, um, a sense of, um, you know, uh, reverence to our own selves. 
and it will you know, create a ghafla, a sort of ghafla within us. If you're living the first way in which, you know, that, that you know, every place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be in our mind, Allah ta'ala remains there, then the opposite happens. Now this person develops an awe towards Allah, right? This majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, this, you know, reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, a person develops this ma'arifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And within ourselves, we develop a sense of like a very deep and extensive idz, humility and humbleness, because we see everything the way that we should see it. The perception is correct. So we are looking at things the way that they should be looked at. Right? So we see all the ni'mah. And we attach it, Allah, 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 everything, right? And there is no mistake, there is no, you know, two things that I always say, right? غلط فهمي or خوش فهمي. There is no mistake uh, from our perspective and there is no delusion from our perspective. We're not deluded somehow thinking that we are the source of the khair, right? We are the source of the khair. The source of the khair in Nima is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a lot of times when we talk about this, this you know, this notion of the kabur and kibar and it's we have spoken about this from different angles. Um, it is really a misappropriation of our own perception. Right? That this takabur happens because we are not looking at the world the right way. Our relationship to ourselves, to this dunya and to Allah, right? This is the triangle relationship, all this. We exist. The dunya exists, or Allah Ta'ala exists, right? When we do this I, 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 me, myself, then slowly that triangle becomes a line. It's just me and the dunya. And this is what, you know, what we spoke about the last time we got together. This is the whole like secular paradigm, right? That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala fades away, or is a very superficial kind of, like there's no impact that, you know, it's a connection that's, you know, that's really not, uh, you know, that's not productive. It's, it's very, it's very um, abstract, even in our own minds and consciousness, right? So it's a straight line. But when the hakika is there, it's a triangle. Allah Ta'ala is right there, right, on the top. And then it's, it's a makhluk. Master and also Allah has this makhluk, this dunya, and we interact with the dunya through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? All of our connection is through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So it's important that we fix that because kibr and takabur will grow if it's a straight line because you know it's my efforts, it's my mihnat, it's my everything. I got this risk, you know, I spoke and it's my you know ilm and my zikr and and my this and my that and and again if you mention if you look at this i'm i'm, I'm talking about not only the dunyavi aspect of things but the, even the dini aspect of things because all of these things are name right the ability that oh i'm a great reciter of quran or i'm a hafid or i'm an alim or i'm a zakir or i'm a da'i or i'm whatever right if the triangle doesn't exist very easily those ni'mah, those blessings can and usually do become a source of our own pride and arrogance. And if that triangle is ex exists in a, in a, in a re realistic way, right? that it's not just abstract, you know, okay, take Allah ki ni'mah, you know, so we're not really, you know, we're not even, you know, there's, we're not jesting, when we, you know, we're not, and it's really that this is from Allah and it has been given to us and I have to give this back, you know. Towards the end of my life. This time has been given, Ya Allah, this is back. This sihat has been given, Ya Allah. This faragat has been given, Ya Allah. Risk has been given, you can't eat anymore, right? And, you know, and every single thing, right? So, so it has to be realistic. If not, it will, it will start to destroy our own nafs because it, you know, de develops with the perception and that perception causes certain self-realities, right? Not meaning they, they just exist within us. They don't exist in the outer world. They exist in our own the way that we look at the dunya. Right? It's not the hakika. It's not the hakika. We are nothing and nobody. And, you know, um, if there were aliens looking down upon us, they, they would probably 
say that, you know, this person won amongst the 8 billion, and this person thinks that, you know, that they are something, they're like, you know, Allahu Akbar. You know? Even the aliens, they would know to say Allahu Akbar when they look at this, right? So it's, you know, it's within us. It's our in our own wujud that we see things like that. It's not in reality. It's not in reality. So, ids and humbleness and humility only comes when, when this kind of curtains are raised, these veils are lifted, and that triangle becomes more and more apparent to us. Ya Allah, this risk is, yes, of course it's from you. It, it is from you. Ya Allah, whatever you have given, Ya Allah, this house, it's from you. You, you just, I'm, I'm just, in a very real sense, I'm just passing through it. Very soon I'll be dead. And who knows who will own this house afterwards, right? Who knows? It's, we're just passing through it. All our jobs, we're just passing through them, you know. I'm the director today. Tomorrow somebody else is going to be a director, you know. And you'll be a retiree, huh? All our businesses, exactly like that. You know, even for, for some, you know, like they, they own families. They become somebody else's, you know. You, you die and you pass on and... And, you know, your wife becomes somebody else's wife. And your children are calling somebody else's huh, Abu. And, and, you know, that's it. That's, that's the reality. Okay? So a deep sense of idz and humility and humbleness will only grow when we fix our own minds. So we do think of this from a perspective of spirituality. Yes, it's a ruhani mard. It is a, you know, nafsani problem. You know, the nafs is you know, is acting up and, and the qalb is, is not in the right position. It's a mard, right? It's a, it's a spiritual disease. We always discuss it like that. But, you know, it's also important that we look at it from the perception of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really the way that we look at the dunya. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a worldview perception problem as well. You can always connect it back, yes, the, the heart was closed and the nafs had hawa in it, and you know, so it, it they kind of push you towards that. But ultimately, you know, the the, the shaur, the consciousness develops this. It has to develop a way that it looks at existence. It has to. I mean, that's that's we we, we try to make sense of the dunya that we are in. It has to develop that, and so it has to be realistic, grounded in reality. It has to be grounded in reality, and reality is what, what I just explained. You can, so especially for Salikin, why is it important? Because the maqsad, one of the maqasid behind the whole concept of tazkiyah, purification, tasfiyah, this, this cleansing, etc., etc., is, is to, to fix, to, to recreate this triangle within us. So to detach the ni'mah from ourselves, from associate, associating to ourselves. And we have to, to really believe it. It has to be very imani. It has to be ikhlaqi. It has to be wujudi for us. Right? It's, it's not just something that I say. Right? It's not just something that I just say and not mean it. I have to mean it even if I don't say it. You see what I mean? So, you know, even if you don't say it, but you have to really understand it, know it. That's what we call vujudi. Right? That, that, to, it, it's, it's like an almost existential thing, the way that you look at existence. It has to be like that. And when you have that, and all the anbiya were like that, Sahaba Kiram and Iswanullah Jumain were like that, a lot of the mashaykh, when we look at their, their life stories, the, you know, the, the ones that we have access to, you, you'll find that amongst them. You know, you're like, oh, mashallah, they had a lot of, it's very humility and humbleness. And, but why? The question is, why? of course they were Ambiya, but I mean, you know, if you look at it from psychology perspective, if you're looking at what are the, the reason is the Hakika, this Hakika was very open to them. Why is Adam alayhi salam saying, Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfirna? Why that is there and not in nafs? Because, not in, because shaitan did not have that clarified. Right. That clarification just wasn't there. Right. And we, we can go back into, okay, so he had he had a lot of, you know, he had, he had the kabbud and he had hairs and he wanted khalafa and, you know, there was this and this. You know, we can always give, the, but at the end of the day, he just, he was not mindful of this. He was not mindful. And Adam al Islam is very clear to him. And that is why it is written in some books that when he descended upon this earth, 
you know, for, for a couple of hundred years, he was crying. Because even the hakik of, of forgiveness was open to him. You know, for us, it'll be like, Ya Allah, you know, I've asked for forgiveness and I've asked for change. You know, I asked 10 times. You know, it's not really happening. So, you know what, maybe it's just not in my muqaddar. So people give up. But the, the reality was open to Adam Muslim. No, I have to keep on doing it because my existence, my survival, my redemption, and, you know, my akhira depends on this. And so continuously, with the same sense of, of ids, he's asking for forgiveness. And you find that amongst every Nabi. The Nuh is like that. You know, you, you find that he's also, you know, seeking Allah Ta'ala's help and you know you as ayub alayhi salam how many 17 years of his life right 17 year he's you know like if we become sick for 17 days you know, after that we just the desperation starts to hit and that's like a chatika bas yeha but 17 years and nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know like the the greatest example you know sometimes i like to think of you know I mean, now it's it, what they say is like uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So we have because we have the whole life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi in front of us. You know, it's okay. So this is how it worked out. You know, there were all these difficulties, trials, tribulations, then Alhamdulillah, eventually, Allah Taala helped, right? And in Allah Taala, you know, Subhanallah, you know, you find that Allah Taala gave him the ultimate success. But what if you're in the middle and you just look at this life and you don't have access to this one? How many opportunities are there for a person to fall into despair? How many, right? So you spend like 13 years. How many times, you know, would a person give up? Like, you know, if we put ourselves, you know, as, as they say, you know, if we try to put ourselves in that situation, what if our whole khandan boycotts us? I'm not going to talk to you, no economic activity, no social activity, you know, pushed away somewhere. How will we react? When our closest loved ones are taken away, how will we react? When we go to our in-laws in a sense of our nenial, our you know, the maternal part of the family, not only do they do you know do we get rejected, but we're getting pelted and spat on and how will we react? How many times would we just give up? How many times would we just give up? And you know, when you know, in, in all the expeditions, whether it's Badr and whether it's Uhud, whether it's the Khandak, you know, how many times you, you do you face like ultimate annihilation? And you know, it's like, you know what, I cannot. But because Hakika, you know, of course, Nabi says some is, is the source of that, you know, but Nabi says, you know, so crisp there. It's so crisp there. He understands how ni'mat are taken and given, he understands the nature of the test. He understands what is important, right? And this is one of the reasons. I mean, you know, why is Nabi Sassam lived in our words with such a faqirana zindagi, right? That, you know, why did he choose Akhirah? Because it was so clear in his mind. He's saying, this ni'mah, which is aridi, you know, I'm not going to focus on this. And to me, starvation or, you know, not eating two days in a row and it's okay, because that was so clear and crisp. If something like that happens to us, you know, if we lose our jobs or you know, if business isn't working or something else, you, know, you see that the drain on our psychology, on our psyche. Oh my God, the world is falling apart. Life is falling. So it means, you know, a lot of the things that we are saying is just on our tongues. The the, the hakikat is not there. That's the difference, just from a psychological perspective. That's the difference of how a Nabi looks at the dunya, how the Sahaba Kram looked at the dunya, how the awliya, they used to look at the dunya, and how we perceive the dunya. Okay, how we perceive the dunya. And so a true sense of Eids will only come when we align ourselves, we adopt. So we have to adopt and adapt. Right? So when we adopt that mindset and that worldview, that perception. That's the true it. Other than that, there is no true it. We can, we can pretend it to be humble. We can pretend to be down to earth. You know, we'll call ourselves faqir, faqir, rajis, and this and that. You know, we'll do all of that. 
असल में नहीं होगा असल वोट भी देर असल कैन नेवर बी देर अनलेस दैट दैट इज सॉल्व आई मीन वी हैव टू रिजोल्व दैट कंफ्यूजन ना रहे देर इज नो सेंस ऑफ कंफ्यूजन देर ठीक है ना दिस दुनिया इज जस्ट अ प्लेस वेर नेम आर गिवन नेम आर चेंज एंड नेम आर टेकन अल्लाह सुबहान इज द अल्टीमेट सोर्स ऑफ एवरी सिंगल नेम इवन द फैक्ट दैट वी आर एबल टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम सेन इट इज अ ब्लेसिंग फ्रॉम अल्लाह even the fact that you know we see that you know we can see this is the difference you know uh, let's not get into like the khabar and the nazar aspect of thing but if we see that i did this i got the dollar in my hand i took the dollar and i bought an apple from the store aren't nazar is seeing that we are doing it but the real the reality behind this that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all of it so we have to associate that and slowly detach it from ourselves ठीक है अल्लाह की तरफ से हो रहा है अल्लाह की तरफ डजेंट मीन वी स्टॉप मेकिंग द एफर्ट ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव टू डू दैट राइट बट रियली अंडरस्टैंडिंग के जितनी भी उसमें खैर आएगी इन ऑल द खैर विद इन दैट ऑल द इफेक्ट द पॉजिटिव इफेक्ट और द नेगेटिव इफेक्ट और द नेगेटिव इफेक्ट राइट फॉर अल्लाह ताला एंड देयर इज देयर इज लिमिटेड कंट्रोल दैट वी हैव ठीक है ना तो इस चीज का डेवलप करना जरूरी है एज अ सालिक You know, as somebody who are, you know, you're, mashallah, students of knowledge. Inshallah, Taala, very soon you'll be. Everybody will be calling Maulana, Maulana, and Mufti, Mufti, and this is a good word, huh? A mazata, you know, when we are called these words. Again, mazata bata, when the triangle is not fixed there, and when the hakikat is there, you know, it's like, you know, I'm. This is just a name, and Allah, you know, whatever they're calling Maulana or Mufti or Sheikh, they're just attaching to that name that it belongs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm just, I'm just a user. I'm just. We have to detach those things. No yoga, then you know, it's going to, it's going to really, really affect. I mean, it really does. It affects, you know, like people when they're called, you know, certain things, or you know, people behave certain ways with them, and. It just changes. It changes everything about you. But I've seen that, and I've seen that. You know, it's. I've been. I would say, like, unfortunate to see this for for a long time. You know, my Rab, bore hoge, right? So it's like you know, we are, we have been in this dunya. We have seen the dunya. There's no shortcut to experiences, right? And so you you see that you see a lot of youngsters who kind of enter into the whole dini mahal, and you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. And, And you know, you pray for it. You know, Alhamdulillah, may Allah Taala preserve them and may Allah Taala take work from them. But once they're done, then you 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 see a lot of them like falling the same kind of pitfall. It's the same, you know, like how the effects of of tarif, right, of praise and and recognition and affirmation and. You know all of those things that it starts to have an effect on them, and you're like, oh God, if if only I could. I guess I guess there's some arrogance in there too. Like it's like, oh, if only I can like help them. No, because we can't really help them. It's Allah Taala. So you just hope that somehow they they they're exposed to the reality of things, and they're able to distance themselves from from everything that they have finally you know considered to be an expression of their their own self. It is. It is what it is. ठीक है ना कि आप लोगों को बात समझ में लग रही है, ठीक है ना कि इस चीज के अंदर पढ़ना नहीं है. This is something that you know for साले के you know is it's one of the the things that साले के हाले का हो जाएगा. That हालाका will will come because of that. ठीक है इस चीज को बहुत एहतियात है. बहुत इसमें एहतियात है कि हर चीज में इसलिए अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह कहते हैं. जबान से भी कहें एंड बट ऑल्सो फील इट इन साइड फील इट अलहमदिल्लाइम्स इफ समबरी सच समथिंग अबाउट यू नो माशा यूर ग्रेट एथलीट यूर ग्रेट ओरिटर यूर ग्रेट दिस से इट इट्स नॉट मी इट्स अल्लाह तू डोंट हैव टू से टू द पर्सन बिकॉज दैट कैन ऑलवेज लीड टू फॉल्स सेंस ऑफ इट्स टू बट यू नो गो गो बैक होम लुक एट योर सेल्फ इन द मेर एंड जस्ट बंदे दिस इज नॉट यू 
remember it is not you it is exclusively allah sirf allah allah ne diya un logon ko galat fehmi hai ki wo mujhe samajh rahe allah ne di sirf allah ka wo mujhe sheikh keh raha tha main kaun sa sheikh mujhe pata hai what is the haqeeqat i know allah taala ka sitare so it's important baat samajh mein lag rahi hai ya nahi lag rahi इनशा तला इस चीज़ के ऊपर ज़रा सा नज़र रखें ताकि इस्पेशली वन इट कम्स टू वट वी कॉल द तरीक एंड द वे ऑफ द खाजा गान द नक्शबंदी मुझे दे दी सलूक यू नो इट्स इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट ये रियलिस्टिक एड्स गेट्स डेवलप एंड इट्स 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 रियल इट हैज़ टू बी रियल मन तवादा रफा दिस तवाज़ो हैज़ टू बी ऑथेंटिक जेन्यून राइट इट हैज़ टू बी फॉर द सेक ऑफ अल्लाह सुबह फिर इस नस्बत का फ़ायदा होगा ठीक है ना अदरवाइज आई ऑलवेज से के खिलाफत बिकम्स खाली आफत राइट सो वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट वी डोंट वॉन्ट दैट के यू नो एंड मे अल्लाह सुबह मेक इट ईजी फॉर ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ मे अल्लाह सुबह इन शीप ऑन द राइट वे इन द राइट manner inshallah tala till we breathe our last and may allah tala give us a life of iman and when the time comes may allah subhanahu wa tala give us a death of iman and kalma tayyibah amin ya rabbal alamin wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin